Welcome to the CDI CTO Podcast presented by CDI Studios. All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the CDI CTO Podcast. My name is Will Huber. I'm the CTO at CDI. And today I'm very excited. We have a very special guest with us today. Uh, we have Mr. John Owings, who is the Global uh, Director for Cloud Native Strategy at Portworks by Pure Storage. Is that, uh, is that, that get that a, right? That was a long intro, <laughs> but yes, absolutely good, correct. Good. I, I always, I'm a stickler for, for branding and I, I want to make sure I respect the, uh, make Definitely. sure Portworks by Pure is, is the correct. Yes, uh, that, is, that is the way to do it. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, cool. And we're excited to, to have you here. And actually, you're, you're no stranger to, uh, to CDI events. And um, it's been quite a long time, actually, since we've we've had you. It was before the pandemic. Yes. Uh, so if we can, we'll pull up maybe a graphic. We have a, a picture. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, this is the last time we were together. This was in November of 2019, so just a few months before before the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and we I had... dressed up super nice. I wore my nicest Patagonia vest. <laughs> I love it. I love you know, it. Fit in with everybody else. We, uh, there, we call the... that we call that cloud casual. It's, yes. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> the Patagonia vest or the the golf polo and that's how the, I, uh, the, that's... the fancy uh, dress sneakers is uh... dress sneakers. Uh, you know. That was that was actually a topic of conversation afterwards. Like everyone was like, "Oh, we really like your sneakers." That's like, so funny. That's so funny. It's true though. Everybody, every now you see them everywhere. Yeah, you can't go to a tech event. I'm a, I'm a trendsetter. We, we can say I that. I love much. it. I love it. <laughs> cool. Well, well, thanks for being here. Um, you know, I want to sort of talk to you about your your progression in your career. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe a little bit of a history lesson and, and some of your experiences in prior teams and, and companies. And then we'll we'll sort of fast forward to to today and talk about what what it is you're doing day to day and. Um, and how what you're doing with Portworks is helping customers and, and in partnership with CDI. So yeah. um, I want to go back like like pretty far, actually. Um, we'll talk about, you know, earlier in your team, you were um, earlier in your career, uh, you were a member of, of a very special team, in, in my opinion, uh, called the V-Specialist team at, at oh, EMC. Yeah. Uh, it was sort of a, a very interesting time where you had this disruptive technology with VMware and you know, EMC was uniquely positioned. They built this awesome pre-sales team called the V Specialist. I mean, you guys had shirts and everything. Oh yeah. Um, get, tell me about. I still like have that. a bunch of those shirts. I, I'm sure you do. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Tell me about that experience. Uh, well, what that was like for you. Yeah, I mean, it was obviously it was it was a team that was focused on really bridging the gap between VMware and EMC. Yep. In a time where that was absolutely needed, right? Yeah. It was something you know. Chad was kind of you know, blessed to go do from Joe Tucci, like, go make this work. Yep. And uh, he brought in some really special people, like, really that have, you know, that are still friends with today, like, yeah. even though we all work at competitors of each other, sure. you know, all over the place. But it was really actually a really fun time. And, and I learned a ton about, because I kind of came from post sales before that. Yep. So I knew a lot of VMware, I knew a lot of, like, technical stuff, but, like, actually interacting with customers daily, that was a, that was a huge uh, learning time for me. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, we were talking off camera before we we started recording, and you know, you 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 think of some of the names right that were on that team, and and look at where they are today. You're, yourself yeah. included, right? You're you're part of that conversation, but big jobs at big companies who are are really making a, a big impact on on the industry, and it all sort of started with that V specialist team. I thought it was it was so cool. We used to run into each other at conferences all the time. You were yep. part of like the hands on labs experience at, at EMC World and VM World, and um, really cool time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember having to build uh, demos for Chad that he did on stage at Chad's, <laughs> yeah. wor the, uh, the Chad's World Chad's on world. stage. I remember Chad's World. That was uh, super fun. And then having it all crash like the day before and rebuilding it all again. It was all fun stuff. Oh, that's you funny. Know, super fun. That's so funny. So speaking of labs and, and experiences <laughs> of that. So I, I caught something in preparation for this. I caught something on, I think it was on LinkedIn. Maybe we can pull up the, the graphic of the exchange. Um, there was a, I, I think it was a, you were promoting something that you were doing, uh, if I look down there, and there was exchange between you and Matt Calger. was talking yes. about how he was having this problem, he's banging his head against the wall. I think it was some sort of lad, probably in support of an event like that. Um, and he says, he picks up the phone and he called you, and in like five seconds, you, you the spanning tree <laughs> protocol, that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that. Well, I mean, I was kind of, I kind of got like pigeonholed into, like I was the Cisco guy Yep. that I, I had my CCNA, in that team, and 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 we had several labs throughout EMC. Obviously, there's there's all kinds, and and Matt was heavily involved with one that had a lot of symmetrics in it. That's, okay. that was his specialty back yep. then. Yeah, and he calls up and says, "Hey, this this is you know this is what's happening. Like it just keeps 
going offline, going offline. Sure. And and uh, I just said, you know, what are the what are the colors of the lights? <laughs> and he, he described it, and I'm like, spanning tree. <laughs> And that, that was what it was. And I, honestly, like, there probably was some more detail in there that sure. he described. You know, it's not all, you know, but sure. yeah, that was, that was, uh, I haven't, I don't know. I haven't fixed a spanning tree problem in years now. Yeah. So. Well, <laughs> that might have been know, the last think, one. That's, <laughs> that's funny. So we'll put it that way. That's funny. And uh, you know what I also love about that, that graphic, if we pull it back up is, you know, the, the, uh, the exchange in the comments that, you know, Ben chimes in mm -hmm. talking about, you know, there's a, a, a bit of joking about it. Oh, it's always the network. It's always DNS. It's spanning tree, whatever it is. But then Ben at the end, he ends with, I miss you guys. Right. Yeah. And I think that says a lot of, you know, going back to the V specialist team and how special that, that team was. I, I, I feel like that's uh, that was cool to see. Yeah. And when we, and it's like, we never skip a beat. If we see each other at a conference, if I see Ben or Matt, you know, it's like, Hey, how's it going? Yeah. You know, we've, you know, it's, we're right back to where we were, That's even though we're, we're spread all over the place now. Awesome. Awesome. It's good to hear. I love that. All right. So, so you're at EMC, right? You're doing a lot of really cool things. EMC at the time. I mean, I, I think it was what, 2013 that you joined pure yes. from, from EMC. Yeah. And I, you know, it, it's so interesting to me, right? I'm, I'm, I'm really curious to hear your answer. At the time, I think Pure did like, it was something like $6 million in revenue annually. And EMC at the time was doing like 20, 20 billion yeah. in revenue. So, right? so you, you go from a company doing that amount of revenue to this, this scrappy little startup, mm -hmm. basically, essentially. And what is that like culturally? How, how, did you, how did you respond to that? Well, I mean, it was, it was actually, I mean, it was perfect timing for me. I needed, you know, I needed something new sure. to do, something more, more challenging and it was, it fit my personality so much better. Yep. So as the V specialist team was kind of winding down and mm -hmm. kind of, kind of melt, you know, they kind of took that concept and spread it out to, sure. to the rest of pre-sales at EMC. Yep. That, as that was winding down, I kind of needed something. I was kind of have this personality of, I want to go build stuff. I want to go do something different. Yep. So it was perfect timing for that. And, you know, we went to a place where, you know, I knew everyone, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, I could go talk how, to how Cause or John there? Hayes. I was the three three hundred and fourteenth okay. employee. There, I mean, early. there was there was less than that, you know, because there's people who come and go, yep. you know. But I was number three fourteen officially. Uh -huh. But yeah, it was it was I was probably in the the first thirty pre sales people. Yeah, you know, That's maybe cool. first twenty. Uh, Were you doing a lot like of that. travel at that time, or, or not well, really? At that point in time, I was kind of assigned to the southeast. So I was okay. in Atlanta. I had the whole southeast. We we did a lot of driving because we were, but no one knew what pure was. Right. 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 You, you know, they had the like the edgy YouTube videos that you can still find out there that are, <laughs> that are hilarious. And, and people kind of knew it, but they didn't they didn't know who you were. If we went and talked to like a, a CTO or a director of IT infrastructure, they're like they had no clue. We had to start from the beginning every time. Yep. Talking about John, you know, cause and Veritas. And this is what he uh -huh. made. He sold some, you know, like that whole story. Like Just we get some credibility <laughs> along the way. Oh, right? yeah. It's, it was He's it turned was into big things. Right. Yeah. The, yeah. This is, you know, he. <laughs> did well in this and we're going to do, we had full confidence. And actually, I mean, I never was really any doubt that we were going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even at a time when there was, it seemed like a dime a dozen for flash startups at that point, you know, it feels like there were a lot of them came and went. We're they? the, we're the last one. Yep. That's, that's amazing. I mean, I, I was going to ask you like from the beginning, did, did you always know that like fast forward, what is it? Eight years now? That you know, Pure is now like a, a mainstay in, in the data center and in the cloud, and we'll, we'll get mm -hmm. to that right when we talk about all the things you're doing now. But did you always know that it would turn into a two billion dollar company that that is a household name? Um, I didn't know it would be like that, like household name or you know household name to IT people. Like fair, my parents still barely know the company <laughs> I work for. But but you know the 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 big thing is that I I figured we we were going to change the way things are done. Yep. So that's why I was always fully confident this will work because I'd been on the on the customer side. I'd been on the partner side. Yep. And I saw this as like we are changing people's lives. Like the technology is awesome. It's the, you know, I still feel that the best block array in the world. But the, the things that they did around the evergreen sure. and upgrades and, you know, I could go, I would go in and tell a story to a storage admin and be like, hey, we could upgrade it on Thursday. So you can actually go to your kid's soccer game. Yeah. And they're blown away by that. One, they didn't think I was, you know, for the first year, you know, they all thought we were making it up. Yeah. But when people started doing it and, t and then had other customers real. tell the yeah. story and made it real. And, and at that point I knew that, you know, we were going to, we're going to be okay. Like yep. 
I never thought we were going to be you know as big as EMC. Like, but yep. we, I think we did a did a pretty good job. We're we're still here. Sure. Some of those brands don't exist anymore. I know. I know. It's it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. So so you're at Pure. You're in the I I believe the SE organization yes. for the most part. The beginning part of your tenure there. And then Portworks happens, mm -hmm. right? Pure acquires uh, Portworks, right? Um, and recently, well, relatively recently, I think, you, it seems like you've always sort of had an eye for the, the modern uh, sort of the, the edge cases. And, you know, you're, you, you're in early with this, this all-flash startup. You know, you've now made the move over to the Pure, or the, the Portworks division, I guess. Is it a division? or BU or what? BU, yeah, okay. Business unit, um, yeah. yeah. Tell me about like that transition because I, I think you know you have a traditional like a VI admin and a net, you talked about your networking background. Mm -hmm. You were like the token CCNA guy on the V specialist team. How did you make the the shift from infrastructure and administration into applications? Because those two worlds historically have been completely different, <laughs> and that's not an easy transition. Yeah. So I think a lot of people are probably wondering, how did you do it? Like, what what tips do you have for anybody listening that might be in that situation? Well, it kind of goes back to 2016, like post IPO at Pure. I was kind of getting itchy to kind of the te the company had grown a lot. I wanted to do something exciting and new. Yep. And I started just to kind of be more of an SME for for virtualization, helping one of the big things that, and I'm still proud to be able to do it if I can is help Cody yep. Osterman out. You know, yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. you can't, you know, he can't be the only VMware guy, and mm -hmm. so um, I would take his scraps, you know, and be able to help help on things. But there was a point where I was like, we need, I need to do something new. I went to Docker. This is 2017 before uh, Portworks was even sure. a consideration at Pure. Yeah, and I just kind of caught the fever for it. You know, it's just like it was in Austin. It was exciting. It was DockerCon, right? It wasn't even KubeCon at that time. Yep. And it was it was super exciting. Then I went to a KubeCon a few months after that, and I just knew this was going to it change. The, like just like with Flash, all Flash, I knew something. This was going to change the way people do things. Yes. And so I just dove in. Yeah. So I would say, you know, if, you know, if you wanted to, if you want to get into make that jump, I had to be extremely passionate about it. Yeah. And I just dedicated hours and hours, like a lot of reading, a lot of reading, a lot of, lot of tinkering. You know, I did I did like Nigel Poulton's Kubernetes class okay. on. Plural side or something like yep. that to kind of get the gist of it. Sure, but I would say spending you know uncountable hours breaking things in the lab to be able to demo the very first Docker plugin that Pure made. Yeah, like, hey, I'm going to go tell you know I'm going to go tell you know some large telco company about this plugin. I got to make sure I know how it works. So I you know I spent lots and lots of time that morphed into PSO and okay. into our Kubernetes driver, yep. which eventually made it led us to Portworks, yep. right? So um, in 2020. Very cool. So when, when you started sort of the port, enter Portworks, were you, um, what was your role like at the beginning of, of that journey? I, I, we'll get to what it is yeah. now, but how did, how did that sort of evolve? So it started, it started several months before that, just kind of evaluating who we were going to invest in. Okay. Like it was, it was really, you know, I was just a part of it, yep. but deciding whether, you know, Hey, can we build our own thing or should we, yeah. invest in someone else. So you had a seat at that table, at least a, a view yes. of, the, of that process. Yes. That's very cool. Yes, yeah, so it, it was it was pretty exciting, you know, especially since I was like, you know, pre-sales guy, but yep. you know, they, I th think that a few, you know, Rob Lee or, you know, our CTO now, yep. they valued, you know, my input on this and some other, you know, on our team. So I was there and when I found out the news that we were going to actually make an offer to acquire or mm -hmm. one you had to sign all these you had to like sign your life away. You yep. couldn't even like breathe it on anybody. <laughs> but you know, at that point we started planning because is that when this was complete, I would kind of take over the building of the pre-sales organization. For okay. That. So there was a couple, really only three pre-sales people at Portworks before. Yep. But as we brought that in, it started hiring people. So I spent the next from twenty from that was October twenty twenty when that officially closed. I uh, spent the next year and a half building a team, like just yeah. getting the pre-sales organization off the ground, which was a whole new challenge for me. Like, sure. you know, I was always kind of like the smart guy. Yeah. And it was like, hey, go find 10 more people like you. Yeah. Which was a whole new challenge. <laughs> you got it. You got Especially in this scale, in this field. Right? Yeah. And yeah. so that, that was that was fun though. I, I really enjoyed that. And since then I've handed that off to somebody to manage the team. Yep. He, he does a great job. Awesome. You know? <laughs> and uh, I get to kind of focus on a little more strategic things. So so let's talk about that. So current current day role, right? Global Director of, Stra of Strategy for Cloud Native yeah. Architectures. Architectures? Cloud Native, yeah. 
cloud native strategy okay. and architecture cloud native strategy something and architecture. something with those words yes <laughs> so so tell me about that day to day right you you're um you know you're you're more focused on strategy mm -hmm. maybe more you know further out looking um tell me about that yeah so it's a it's a it's a great balance of you know going and listening to customers listening to partners helping bring partners up to speed because we have a lot of pure partners that hey yep. You know they're they were they've gotten super good at selling flash arrays. Now sure. we have a new thing, so I've spent yeah. a lot of time doing that. And I would say um, day to day, you know, working with customers, listening. So it's a little little bit of like principal, global principal, field CTO. Yep. But then also kind of being the glue between, you know, pure marketing and Portworks has its own you know specialized marketing sure. and events team. So helping like tie people together yep. and doing that on the global scale, like making sure that what we have in Europe, we can do here, or, you know, and some of the strategy around how we approach new things like PDF, so Portworks Data Services launched this year. That's okay. kind of been one of my pushes yep. is like, hey, Merle, who runs the BU, was the CEO of Portworks, said, yeah, can you take this and make sure we get our first 30 customers? Yep. So I'm... Um, I do a lot of talking about databases now, more than I ever thought I would. Yeah, you know, going back to, you know, spanning tree days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk about, um, you know, you you just published on on LinkedIn, uh, big milestone. Uh, so I think is I think this was your first. You were awarded your first patent. Yes. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, so maybe we could put that up. I think you've got a picture of it from. Uh, yeah, our cool little there award there. there. Everyone, you can look up that number, and it's sixty pages of very entertaining text. That is. That is very cool. I, I you know, it, it's always been something I, I've thought would be cool to do. Mm -hmm. um, what was that process like? I mean, and, and obviously, I'm sure there was a big team involved in that. And mm -hmm. but to have your name listed as as an inventor, it's yeah. got to be really cool. Yeah, it was actually it was super special because you know I'm on a list in on that patent. If you look up the the official listing, right? Like all those people that are, you know, there's like five other four other people on there besides me. Yep, and they're amazing. Like, yeah, all of them are extremely, extremely talented and, and innovative people. So I'm super just proud to be on a, like yeah. the same page as them. It's a good, a good association, and, right? And, uh, you know, that was, that was really cool because Pure really went ab above and beyond to make sure that we could create this, right, and, and file the patent. So it was, uh, it makes it fun for me to work at a place that like, hey, they wanted to pursue it. Like they, yeah. they brought the people to me. They said, hey, no, just sit down and talk and we'll figure it all out yeah. right and so it was it was actually really easy process it started and then it actually started in 2020 i was going to say it tends to those tend to have a long tail and that right? that patent was pre that was pre portworks wow even though like if you read it real close it's very similar to some of the stuff we do at portworks sure <laughs> sure that's so cool. It's uh, that that's got to be a really, really just rewarding thing. What a milestone! It's cool that they they gave you the little you know thing. Yeah, to, to remind and those like well. work like you know for some of the really smart people like that's all puzzle pieces. So like if I get another one, you can add another yep. piece to that. You it reminds know. me a little bit of like the the cubes that like uh, that VMware does for yeah. I think it's four or eight year anniversary or something. They give you those and then you can kind of stack them up. Yeah, pretty pretty neat. Um, so let, let's shift gears a little bit. Let, let's talk a little bit about the channel. I, yeah. I know you have experience with the channel. You've worked, you know, on the vendor side as well. Um, you know, what is your relationship with the channel? It sounds like you do some enablement mm -hmm. in your current role and, and helping, you know, channel partners that maybe know Pure but are sort of embracing and talk about crossing the chasm into the application world. Yeah. Um, not just as an, an individual level, but at the, at the partner level. Um, that's also very difficult to do. So, so tell me about the channel and its importance to, to you and, and Portworks and Pure overall. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously, the from the Portworks organization, like pure overall, like it's, it's, I was just a bigger version of the, this same answer, sure. which is there's only so much, there's only so many of us. Yep. <laughs> and there's only so many people that we can have a good relationship with. And that's yeah. what I look for in, in, in a good channel partner yep. is someone who, who has good relationships with, with, um, with people, right. Yep. Able to, you know, cause I'm not going to know everyone. I, and you know, as much as as much as we all do it, you know, I can't. I'm not picking up the phone and just calling into the CIO of, you know, some bank. Sure. Right. So if you guys already have a relationship, that that's where you know that's the importance there, and yeah. and so it helps us. It helps us scale. Like really, generally, you know, and if you know anything about Pure and now Portworks is there's nothing that doesn't go through a partner. 
So, I mean, we love that. That's absolutely the, you know, <laughs> there's, there's, and that was one of the things way back, way back in the old days was we, you know, when we were talking to partners, when they didn't know who we were at all, it was like, we will not, there's no flipping direct. It's not even an option yeah. here. Yeah. And that happens at other places. It may still happen. I don't know. I've, it's been so long since I've been there, but yeah, it's, <laughs> um, you know, we, we, we love that, you know, Pure overall has has leaned into the, the channel program. Mm -hmm. I mean, we you know obviously we invest a lot in uh, being able to represent the the brand and the products and and actually and and the service delivery as well too. Right, it's yeah. a big differentiator for us. And being able to not just sell something or transact a license or a, or a box or but being able to actually implement that investment mm -hmm. um, and integrate that investment with with other things, right? That that customer inevitably has, and and you know to be able to operationalize it and get the value that that they thought they would get uh, on their initial investment. That's really where we you know tend to tend to focus. Um, you know, so it's a, it's good to see that that Pure has really invested in that. Yeah, and it's a deep. Program. I mean, if you go beyond just you know, hey, you know, someone with a relationship is what I, what I need from the poor work side. And this is what's so hard to find. And you guys are uniquely equipped, I think, to do this is deliver the rest of that. Yeah. Cause poor works is a very, very crucial, you know, part like, Hey, this is your data yep. in the cloud, in the cloud native space. But for a cloud native project, there are a lot of other moving parts. And if we can't show how it all works together right. and with you, yep. then it, you know, it doesn't make sense to the customer, right? If you know, they can, you know, they need to be able to get that. And somebody that can deliver it all yep. is, is what we need daily. Yeah. I, that end to end <laughs> story is, is, is really what we, what we try yeah. to, to deliver. And, you know, we, we try really hard not to be too myopic or focused on one individual component. It's, mm. The value where we win, honestly, is where we can take those multidiscipline projects and put all those Lego bricks together to build uh, the, the structure, so to speak. So um, it's great that you have that that, that viewpoint as well. Um, for those of that those that don't know, I mean, maybe we'll back up a little bit. Um, give me like your your Portworks like elevator pitch, <laughs> like for somebody maybe not technical. Yeah. Um, how do you explain like like to, to grandma what you do? <laughs> oh yeah, Whew. that's a, that's a big one. Uh, the way that I explain it is the way you know. I'll explain it like I explained to my mom. Right? You is is you've heard of the cloud? Yeah. Right. The way that you deliver applications in the cloud is different. Like you can do it the same way, but that's basically the most expensive way to do sure. it. So, um, in order to get all the efficiencies and scale of the cloud, you change the way you deliver applications, and that's what containers is a piece of. It's a tool to do that. Like yep. it's not the only way. Yep. Kubernetes is not the only orchestrator. It's just right now the best way to deliver those in that format. Sure. And what we do, what I do, so I tell mom, is I make sure your data is always there yep. when you when you move that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, that being the most important part of that of uh, that equation. So very, very cool. And when she goes, well, what do you mean by that? Then I have to, I don't, you know, I have to dig in even more, but <laughs> I love it. I love it. Making happy customers anywhere stateful applications are run. I got that yeah. from your LinkedIn profile. I love it. I love yeah. It. That's uh, yeah, that's my buzz, my buzz word, my buzz phrase, I guess. I think that's great. <laughs> well, Hey, any, uh, this has been awesome. I really yeah. enjoyed this conversation. Any, any last words, uh, where can people learn more about you? Do you, I, yeah. you're a blogger. I've, I've read your blog when it was more VM focused over the years. I was a big reader of that. Uh, plug your blog. For, yeah, for sure. Uh, so the, my blog is blog.crashloopbackoff.io. <laughs> now, if, you've, if you're playing around with Kubernetes and you do something wrong, you'll see that phrase somewhere, yep. right? So crash loop back off. And you know, on there, I have everything back to the EMC days, actually yep. Equalogic days before that yep. of, of you know, VMware integration. And then now it's, it's all Kubernetes and, and, and how to get Take advantage of poor works and things like that. So um, that's that's it. You can find me on Twitter. Two VCPs or John underscore two VCPs. Yep. Uh, and that you can see that legacy of uh, VMware certified professional, that's which I, I told I was telling you earlier. I'm not going to redo. <laughs> I'm done. I'm done taking that test. Yep. And uh, yeah. And or you know, if you want to find out more about poor works, if you go to YouTube, the poor works channel. Just search for Portworks on YouTube. You'll find our channel. There's tons of demo videos and yep. all kinds of fun stuff. And you'll might hear my voice again. A lot, a a lot of, of your those. content is on there. Blogs, videos. I, I've yeah, seen a lot so of it. Yeah, so you can find it. You know, I've starting to cross over. I used to only do my stuff, and now I'm trying to do both to yep. kind of help. 
Well, it's, it's a great way to, to stay sharp, honestly. Yeah. It's, uh, and, and it's a great service to the, to the community. You, you've taught me a lot over the years in the VMR days and, and continue to do that uh, in sort of the, the, the Kubernetes chapter now as well. Uh, hey, man, thanks for being here. Really appreciate yeah. it. This has been a lot of fun. This has been fun. And uh, we hope to see you again on a, at a CDI event. Maybe, maybe another podcast soon. Yeah, I'll be here. All right. Thank you very much. Take Thank care. You. Until next time. The CDI CTO Podcast is brought to you by CDI, hosted by Will Huber and produced by Alyssa Hall and Spencer Grogan. To learn more about CDI, you can visit cdillc.com. The CDI CTO Podcast is a production of CDI Studios.